Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. We shall be discussing the topic, a glance at those that shape their world with their words. You have probably heard how important words are or how our tongues can chart the course of our lives and how we can mold or break others with our lips. However, it is always great when we view this truth about the power of words through the lives of those that were faced with grave circumstances and responded with specific words. Let's start with Abraham. Do you realize that Abraham received Isaac back from the altar of sacrifice through his words? Genesis 22, 5 AMP. Abraham said to his servants, Settle down and stay here with the donkey. The young man and I will go over there and worship God, and we will come back to you. There was such a clear conviction in his heart that he wasn't going to be childless after the sacrifice of his son. So he said, we will come back. Hebrews 11, 17 through 19 AMP shows us what happened next. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, that is, as the testing of his faith was still in progress, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises of God was ready to sacrifice his only son of promise, to whom it was said, Through Isaac your descendants shall be called. For he considered it reasonable to believe that God was able to raise Isaac even from among the dead. Indeed, in the sense that he was prepared to sacrifice Isaac in obedience to God, Abraham did receive him back from the dead, figuratively speaking. Eventually, Isaac was no longer needed for the sacrifice, as God gave Abraham a ram in the place of Isaac. Genesis 22, 6-14, AMP then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on the shoulders of Isaac his son, and he took the fire, fire pot, in his own hand, and the sacrificial knife, and the two of them walked on together. And Isaac said to Abraham, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two walked on together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood, and bound Isaac his son and placed him on the altar, on top of the wood. Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, Here I am. The Lord said, Do not reach out with the knife in your hand against the boy, and do nothing to harm him. For now I know that you fear God with reverence and profound respect, since you have not withheld from me your son, your only son of promise. Then Abraham looked up and glanced around, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering ascending sacrifice instead of his son. So Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen and provided. Another person is Ruth. She became an Israelite and even part of Christ's genealogy by the words of her mouth. This is captured in Ruth 1, 14 through 19 AMP. It says, Then they wept aloud again, and Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Then Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Turn back and follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do the same to me as he has done to you, and more also, if anything but death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole city was stirred because of them. And the women asked, Is this Naomi? Remember God speaking in Deuteronomy 23, 2-4 AMP said, A person of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord, none of his descendants, even to the tenth generation. 
an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. None of their descendants, even to the tenth generation, shall ever enter the assembly of the Lord, because they did not meet you with bread, food, and water on the road as you came out of Egypt, and because they hired to act against you Balaam the son of Beor, from Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse you. But Ruth shifted and altered it all by the use of her mouth. She became a part of the lineage through which Jesus Christ came from. This shows nothing is against you, if your mouth is not against you. But what about David as he faced that terrible giant called Goliath? David killed Goliath with his words, even before killing him physically. Whatever comes out of our mouth at any moment will put what is necessary in our hands, so that we can fulfill our destinies. David had no sword, but he had already declared to Goliath that after he was dead, he would cut off Goliath's head and this is exactly what happened. 1 Samuel 17, 41 through 52, AMP says, The Philistine came and approached David, with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked around and saw David, he derided and disparaged him because he was just a young man, with a ruddy complexion and a handsome appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with shepherd's staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will hand you over to us. When the Philistine arose and came forward to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand into his bag and took out a stone and slung it, and it struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand, so he ran and stood over the Philistine, grasped his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him, and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw that their mighty champion was dead, they fled. The men of Israel and Judah stood with a shout and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance to the valley and the gates of Ekron. And the fatally wounded Philistines fell along the way to Shariah, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then there is Job. Job refused to die even though he was in a bad place and was faced with horrible problems. He kept using his words to speak of his change that would eventually come. Job 14, 13 through 15, AMP. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead, that you would conceal me until your wrath is past, that you would set a definite time and then remember me, and in your loving kindness imprint me on your heart. If a man dies, will he live again? I will wait all the days of my struggle until my change and release will come. Then you will call and I will answer you. You will long for me the works of your hands. It is important to know that if the devil cannot stop you from saying it, he cannot stop you from seeing it. All of these individuals have experiences that prove that words have various effects. The effects of words are as follows. Number 1. What we say many times determines what God does. Here is what God said in Isaiah 44, 26 AMP, confirming the word of his servant and carrying out the plan of his messengers. It is I who says of Jerusalem, She shall again be inhabited, and the cities of Judah, they shall again be built, and I will raise up and restore her ruins. God responded to the words of the children of Israel in Numbers 14, 27 through 38 AMP. How long shall I put up this evil congregation who murmur in discontent against me? I have heard the complaints of the Israelites, which they are making against me. 
Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just what you have spoken in my hearing I will most certainly do to you. Your dead bodies will fall in this wilderness, even all who were numbered of you, your entire number from twenty years old and upward, who have murmured against me, except for Caleb the son of Jephana, and Joshua the son of Nun. Not one of you shall enter the land in which I swore an oath to settle you. But your children whom you said would become plunder, I will bring them in, and they will know the land which you have despised and rejected. But as for you, your dead bodies will fall in the wilderness. Your sons shall be wanderers and shepherds in the wilderness for forty years, and they will suffer for your unfaithfulness, spiritual infidelity, until your corpses are consumed in the wilderness, according to the number of days in which you spied out the land of Canaan, forty days. For each day you shall bear and suffer a year for your sins and guilt. For forty years you shall know my displeasure, the revoking of my promise and my estrangement because of your sin. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will most certainly do this to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed by war, disease, and plagues, and here they shall die. As for the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, and who returned, and made all the congregation murmur and complain against him, by bringing back a bad report concerning the land. Even those ten men who brought back the very bad report of the land died by a plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephna remained alive out of those men who went to spy out of the land. Number 2. What we say determines what the angels of God do. Ecclesiastes 5, 6 and 7 AMP says, Do not allow your speech to cause you to sin, and do not say before the messenger of God that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry because of your voice, words, and destroy the works of your hands? For in a multitude of dreams and in a flood of words there is worthlessness. Rather, reverently, fear God and worship Him with awe-filled respect, knowing who He is. It is what we say that shows angels what to run with. Psalms 103, 20 AMP says, Bless the Lord, you His angels, you mighty ones who do His commandments, obeying the voice of His word. Number 3. What we say affects our enemies. The Bible speaking in Psalms 18, 44 and 45 AMP says, As soon as they hear me, they respond and obey me. Foreigners feign obedience to me. Foreigners lose heart and come trembling out of their strongholds. Number 4. Our words has effect on nature and creation. Jeremiah 22, 29 AMP says, O land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Also, Mark 11, 23 AMP says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. Everything around is waiting to hear what you will say. Number 5. It affects your spirit, soul, and body. Proverbs 12, 18 AMP says, There is one who speaks rashly like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. As you speak, everything aligns in your body no matter how out of place it has been. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for showing me examples of those that use their words to shape their positive future, even in the face of strong opposition and challenges. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace to also speak right, as to see life and not death around me. Amen.